This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test. Test 4. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. Where did the man leave his camera? Oh no, I haven't got my camera. But you used it just now to take a photograph of the fountain. Oh, I remember. I put it down on the steps while I put my coat on. Well, let's drive back quickly. It might still be there. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. 1. Which prize has the man just won? And in second place, Tim Davidson. Tim, would you like to say a few words? Well, I want to thank everyone who has helped me to do so well today. Because it's not just about me, the player. There's my trainer, my manager, and my wife, Jane. I know she'll love this beautiful glass bowl, so it won't be up on a dusty shelf with the cups I've won in the past. We'll enjoy looking at it every day. And I'll be back next year to win that silver plate. <laughs> Thank you. Now listen again. And in second place, Tim Davidson. Tim, would you like to say a few words? Well, I want to thank everyone who has helped me to do so well today. Because it's not just about me, the player. There's my trainer, my manager, and my wife, Jane. I know she'll love this beautiful glass bowl. So it won't be up on a dusty shelf with the cups I've won in the past. We'll enjoy looking at it every day. And I'll be back next year to win that silver plate. <laughs> Thank you. Two. What was the man's first job? I know you think being a postman's not a very good job, long hours and not a lot of money, but I enjoy it. Better than some things I've done. When I first left school, I spent a month or two cleaning windows, and then I got a job building houses... Now that was hard. Of course, when I was at school, I dreamt of becoming a pilot, but I failed to get on a training course. Now listen again. I know you think being a postman's not a very good job, long hours and not a lot of money, but I enjoy it. Better than some things I've done. When I first left school, I spent a month or two cleaning windows, and then I got a job building houses. Now that was hard. Of course, when I was at school, I dreamt of becoming a pilot, but I failed to get on a training course. Three. Where will they have something to eat? I'm really hungry. Can we stop for something to eat before we get to the airport? Sorry, there isn't enough time to stop at a cafe. Your mother's flight gets in at 10 o'clock and we've still got quite a long way to go. 
We don't want to keep her waiting, so I think we'll go straight to the airport. <sighs> we'll need petrol on the way home, so we can stop for a snack at a service station. Now listen again. I'm really hungry. Can we stop for something to eat before we get to the airport? Sorry, there isn't enough time to stop at a cafe. Your mother's flight gets in at ten o'clock, and we've still got quite a long way to go. We don't want to keep her waiting, so I think we'll go straight to the airport. <sighs> we'll need petrol on the way home, so we can stop for a snack at a service station. Four. What does the woman's house look like now? Oh, it was really strange going back to Redmond, where I used to live. Everything has changed so much. I went to see my old house. It used to have trees in the garden and a hedge in the front. Well, the people who own it now have built another bedroom over the top of the garage and removed the trees and hedge, so they have more room to park their cars. Oh, it made me feel really sad because it it looked so different. Now listen again. Oh, it was really strange going back to Redmond, where I used to live. Everything has changed so much. I went to see my old house. It used to have trees in the garden and a hedge in the front. Well, the people who own it now have built another bedroom over the top of the garage and removed the trees and hedge, so they have more room to park their cars. Oh, it made me feel really sad because it it looked so different. Five. Which sport will they do tomorrow? It's great here. I've just been horse riding for the first time in my life. And tomorrow, I'm going to learn how to dive off the high board in the swimming pool. I had no idea there were so many things available. No, I came for the cycling mainly, so I haven't tried all the other things. To be honest, I don't think the pool is for me really. Although I'd like to try the riding. Would you be interested in doing that again tomorrow with me instead of the diving? Yeah, I suppose so. Now listen again. It's great here. I've just been horse riding for the first time in my life, and tomorrow I'm going to learn how to dive off the high board in the swimming pool. I had no idea there were so many things available. No, I came for the cycling mainly, so I haven't tried all the other things. To be honest, I don't think the pool is for me really. Although I'd like to try the riding. Would you be interested in doing that again tomorrow with me instead of the diving? Yeah, I suppose so. Six. What can you see on the television program? Coming up next on the Science Channel is the latest documentary produced and presented by photographer Daniel Hamilton, who made the prize-winning series about African animals, which you may have seen last year. His latest series is simply called Earth. And viewers can enjoy some amazing photography, with pictures of the planet shot from cameras in space using the latest satellite technology. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now listen again. Coming up next on the Science Channel is the latest documentary produced and presented by photographer Daniel Hamilton, who made the prize-winning series about African animals, which you may have seen last year. His latest series is simply called Earth, and viewers can enjoy some amazing photography, with pictures of the planet shot from cameras in space using the latest satellite technology. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Seven. Where will the man sit on the plane? On the plane at last. Now our seats are in row twelve over there. Yes, A and B. Seat A is next to the window. Do you want that one, or do you prefer to sit in the middle? Well, they said the seat on the end seems to be empty too, so I'll take that one instead. I'm not that keen to see outside. Well, I love looking at the clouds, so I'll sit near the window. We'll put our newspapers in the middle, okay?
Now listen again. On the plane at last. Now, our seats are in row 12, over there. Yes, A and B. Seat A is next to the window. Do you want that one, or do you prefer to sit in the middle? Well, they said the seat on the end seems to be empty too, so I'll take that one instead. I'm not that keen to see outside. Well, I love looking at the clouds, so I'll sit near the window. We'll put our newspapers in the middle, OK? That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear an interview with a woman called Lucy Rainbow, who is talking about her job as a painter. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Today we have with us in the studio Lucy Rainbow, who earns her living as a painter. Good morning, Lucy. Can you tell us about your job? Well, I don't paint pretty pictures you can hang on your walls at home. Mainly, I work in the theatre, painting the background scenery for plays. I've also done a couple of CD covers. Oh, that was great, because I got to meet my favourite pop stars. So how did all this start? Well, I always intended to become a proper artist, but I couldn't sell any of my paintings. And anyway, I got bored working alone. I was offered a job in an advertising agency, but the idea of working in the theatre attracted me more. I get the chance to paint something different every day. I get paid reasonably well, and I work with a team of wonderful people. So you enjoy your work, but doesn't it have any disadvantages? Mostly I love it. The only thing that causes me stress is that often I have too many things to do at the same time, while at other times I have nothing to do. It's difficult to organise my time, but I always make sure I stop for lunch. How many hours do you work on an average day? <laughs> There's no such thing as an average day. But generally, I start work at 8 in the morning and go through until 7. That makes it an 11-hour day, which is much longer than the 8 hours that most people work. Is your journey to work difficult? Not really. My dream job would be one where I could walk to work, but that hasn't happened yet. I could drive to the theatre, but that makes me tired. And I get a lot of my best ideas when I'm on my way to work, on the bus or train. Do you have time for any hobbies? Not as much as I'd like. I used to play a lot of tennis until I hurt my ankle. And I was a regular visitor to an art gallery near my home until it closed down. In the little spare time I have, I'm doing a course in computer graphics. I hope what I learn will help me in my job. Well, thank you, Lucy. It's been interesting talking to you. Now listen again. Today we have with us in the studio Lucy Rainbow, who earns her living as a painter. Good morning, Lucy. Can you tell us about your job? Well, I don't paint pretty pictures you can hang on your walls at home. Mainly, I work in the theatre, painting the background scenery for plays. I've also done a couple of CD covers. Oh, that was great, because I got to meet my favourite pop stars. So how did all this start? Well, 
I always intended to become a proper artist, but I couldn't sell any of my paintings. And anyway, I got bored working alone. I was offered a job in an advertising agency, but the idea of working in the theatre attracted me more. I get the chance to paint something different every day. I get paid reasonably well, and I work with a team of wonderful people. So you enjoy your work, but doesn't it have any disadvantages? Mostly, I love it. The only thing that causes me stress is that often I have too many things to do at the same time, while at other times I have nothing to do. It's difficult to organise my time, but I always make sure I stop for lunch. How many hours do you work on an average day? <laughs> There's no such thing as an average day. But generally, I start work at eight in the morning and go through until seven. That makes it an 11 hour day, which is much longer than the eight hours that most people work. Is your journey to work difficult? Not really. My dream job would be one where I could walk to work, but that hasn't happened yet. I could drive to the theatre, but that makes me tired. And I get a lot of my best ideas when I'm on my way to work, on the bus or train. Do you have time for any hobbies? Not as much as I'd like. I used to play a lot of tennis until I hurt my ankle. And I was a regular visitor to an art gallery near my home until it closed down. In the little spare time I have, I'm doing a course in computer graphics. I hope what I learn will help me in my job. Well, thank you, Lucy. It's been interesting talking to you. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. Questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio announcement about a new magazine. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Today we begin the programme with some information about an exciting magazine that will be on sale in the shops next week. It's called Good Living and the aim of the magazine is to show you how to eat well and in a healthy way. So every month there will be information about which fruit and vegetables are in season as well as lots of recipes by top chefs for you to make. In the first issue of the magazine, there will be recipes for fish, which is a good choice if you want to eat healthily. In addition, you'll also find a special free gift. This is a DVD showing how to prepare summer salads using a wide variety of different ingredients, some of them quite unusual. The second issue will have an interesting article about the history of tea and the many kinds you can buy in different countries. It also has a special collection of recipes for children, which will show them some interesting things to make with rice. Of course, there'll be some good things for adults in this second magazine too. There are some wonderful recipes designed especially for parties. The recipes are quick to prepare and very colourful, and some can also be made ahead of time and frozen, which is always useful. Now, the price of the magazine will normally be £3.99, but the first issue will be on sale at £2.49, so that's a good offer, a reduction of £1.50. It will be on sale in supermarkets and newsagents on Monday, so make sure you buy it. The ideas and photos in it are great. Moving on. Next on the programme... Now listen again. Today we begin the programme with some information about an exciting magazine that will be on sale in the shops next week. It's called Good Living 
and the aim of the magazine is to show you how to eat well and in a healthy way. So every month there will be information about which fruit and vegetables are in season, as well as lots of recipes by top chefs for you to make. In the first issue of the magazine, there will be recipes for fish, which is a good choice if you want to eat healthily. In addition, you'll also find a special free gift. This is a DVD showing how to prepare summer salads using a wide variety of different ingredients, some of them quite unusual. The second issue will have an interesting article about the history of tea and the many kinds you can buy in different countries. It also has a special collection of recipes for children, which will show them some interesting things to make with rice. Of course, there'll be some good things for adults in this second magazine too. There are some wonderful recipes designed especially for parties. The recipes are quick to prepare and very colourful. And some can also be made ahead of time and frozen, which is always useful. Now the price of the magazine will normally be three pounds ninety-nine, but the first issue will be on sale at two pounds forty-nine, so that's a good offer, a reduction of one pound fifty. It will be on sale in supermarkets and newsagents on Monday, so make sure you buy it. The ideas and photos in it are great. Moving on. Next on the program. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four, questions twenty to twenty-five. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a man called Carl. And his wife Jenny, talking about the holiday they have just had. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have twenty seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Phew! Home at last. <laughs> That journey seemed to last forever. I'm glad to be back, aren't you?、Mm, not really. I'm sorry our holiday's over. I'll miss the beach. We had a great time, didn't we? Hmm. It was okay. The weather wasn't as good as I'd hoped. I thought the forecast was for bright sunshine the whole week. Well, most of the week was like that. We only had a little bit of rain, didn't we? And they did mention that on the forecast. Yes, the day after it rained. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the food in the hotel was delicious, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And it was good to be able to help ourselves to what we wanted.、Mm. It saved delays, and it meant we could get out quickly in the mornings too. The waiters were very helpful, I must say. Hmm, that was good. The only thing I wasn't happy about was the temperature in the room. It was so hot.、Oh, it certainly was. It didn't help when we opened the windows either. It didn't cool it down at all, did it? No. Still, it was just the same when we went to that other hotel last year. So I wasn't surprised. I don't know why the air conditioning didn't work, though. Well, that wasn't the only thing that wasn't working properly. One of the machines in the gym was broken too, but I suppose it was a very busy time, so the staff were probably just too busy to check it properly. These things happen, don't they? It didn't matter to me.、Mm, right. So, what should we do for our next holiday then? We could go somewhere completely different. I'm not sure. I was hoping we could go to the coast again, but with all the work I've got at the moment, we'll have to wait and see.、Oh, okay then. Now listen again. Phew! Home at last. <laughs> That journey seemed to last forever. 
I'm glad to be back, aren't you? Mm, not really. I'm sorry our holiday's over. I'll miss the beach. We had a great time, didn't we? Hmm. It was OK. The weather wasn't as good as I'd hoped. I thought the forecast was for bright sunshine the whole week. Well, most of the week was like that. We only had a little bit of rain, didn't we? And they did mention that on the forecast. Yes, the day after it rained. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the food in the hotel was delicious, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And it was good to be able to help ourselves to what we wanted. Mm. It saved delays and it meant we could get out quickly in the mornings too. The waiters were very helpful, I must say. Mm, that was good. The only thing I wasn't happy about was the temperature in the room. It was so hot. Oh, it certainly was. It didn't help when we opened the windows either. It didn't cool it down at all, did it? No. Still, it was just the same when we went to that other hotel last year, so I wasn't surprised. I don't know why the air conditioning didn't work, though. Well, that wasn't the only thing that wasn't working properly. One of the machines in the gym was broken, too. But I suppose it was a very busy time, so the staff were probably just too busy to check it properly. These things happen, don't they? It didn't matter to me. Mm, right. So, what should we do for our next holiday, then? We could go somewhere completely different. I'm not sure. I was hoping we could go to the coast again, but with all the work I've got at the moment, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, OK, then. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.